What's going on everybody? A quick walkthrough of Master Crafting. Uh, it's essentially a slight upgrade from Basic Crafting. Did another video on that. Anyway, you're going to need Dagna, which uh, I believe she's unlocked from the uh, Acquire the Arcanist mission at the War Table once you get here to Skyhold, which is where I'm at now. And once you get her, you go to the crafting benches, and lo and behold, you have this Masterwork Crafting slot up here. And what you get is an extra menu of all the Fade Touched and Dragon Part materials you've collected. Right? As you kill dragons, go around and collect items, um, sometimes you'll get a Fade Touched version. Sometimes you'll get more than one Fade Touched version of a particular item. Notice I have two different kinds of Ring Velvet here. And this one in particular interests me. Abilities cost 7.5% less mana or stamina to cast, so it applies to warriors, rogues, and mages. And um, lo and behold, you go come over here to the armor, and the Fade Touch materials have the exact same effect on armor that they do on your weapons. They don't change. So you can stack them. Or you can mix and match. Like, say, if you find um, two different things that you really like, put one on your, on your weapon and then one on your armor. All right? Or put two of the same thing on your armor and weapon and get double the effects. So I could get essentially a 15% cost reduction in mana and stamina on my ability castings, and that would be huge for a mage, especially. All right? And then uh, also keep in mind that um, you have, and this goes back to basic crafting, you have different types of armor for each class. Like you have coats and mail, for example. And um, one might usually leans towards um, elemental resistance, mostly. And the other one will lean towards physical resistance, such as melee and ranged. All right. Whereas the other one would be um, would have a wide array of of different elemental resistances, like lightning and spirit and cold and fire and, and all that good stuff. And um, the physical resistance also will offer some of that too. Um, you can still sometimes find like fire resistance, say a basic cold resistance, but mostly it's going to be melee and ranged, and that would more pertain to your mail and your armor. Right. But in actually uh, crafting a piece of gear, um, essentially all you do is come in here, and it's, it's, it's really simple. You put your Fade Touch or your Dragon Part material that gives you the desired effect, right? And then you come down here, and um, another thing of note is you have some materials which will raise your weapon's base effects far beyond what they're supposed to be. Like this, if I use Dragon Bones, it raises it to 236, all right? Essentially, the max is supposed to be 195, but there are certain really rare materials... Um, that will that will send it beyond that. Not just because it's a masterwork recipe, but just because of the of the rarity of the material you're using. Like in that in that case, it'd be dragon bones, but I'd need 18 of them to make that. And that I would definitely not waste that on a level 15 item. I would wait till I was in my 20s before I made that item, so I could get max stats out of that. You know, because that'd be like a one-time in-game deal there. You know. And that would apply to, you know, a weapon and armor. I would save all the really rare stuff for something that's going to be a keeper, right? And then uh, when you're doing your, your upgrades, this is where master um, crafted um, schematics come in, is they usually have an extra um, material slot or two or even more, whatever. But uh, notice this branches off to two different slots instead of just one down below. And so I get to double the bonuses, essentially. Notice I leaned heavily on strength. Um, the second tier items will give you um, extra uh, bonus stats of one thing, or sometimes extra of two. Like, uh, some of those materials gave me both strength and constitution. Or extra strength or extra constitution above what, say, iron or serpent stone would give me. Okay? And um, so having quite a bit of obsidian, having collected a lot of that, I uh, had a lot of that to work with. That was cool. And uh, viridium also. It becomes real common in some of the maps that you unlock after you get to Skyhold. Just go doing a little adventuring, and sometimes you one node will give you as many as like six or seven of them. All right, so that adds up pretty fast. All right, and then uh, to further fine tune your gear. It, okay, really to make an analogy, masterwork crafting is essentially like giving a specialist ability to your gear. Just like when you come to Skyhold and you unlock the trainers to get a specialist ability for your character, this is kind of like specialist for your gear. You get to um, cater it to your playstyle even more, you know? And uh, then we just go back to the upgrades and, you know, what will complement my playstyle now that I have some higher level materials? Well, since I'm a DPS-based character, I want critical chance, critical damage if it's available. Um, I doubt there's going to be anything for a warrior that raises my dexterity, but I, I, I do have some stuff that raises my cunning, which is critical chance and even slightly raises your range defense. But I also have other gear that raises your base critical chance, right? but um, may provide other bonus stats as well, like extra strength, extra constitution, right? 
And uh, really, it's, you know, what am I willing, you know, it's the decision time. Well, what what outweighs the other? You know, what gives me the most overall benefit? Or do I am I really just grinding out one particular stat for that gear to really emphasize one particular thing? Like, you know, maxing out critical, chance, critical, everything, all the way down the line. You know, I found a schematic and found materials and found upgrades that all just can steer that piece of gear towards doing that one thing. Well, that's great, you know, and that's that's probably what I do. I'd focus on that completely. But if I find gear where, you know, this has a little of that, but has some of this too, and that has a little of that, but then it has this other stuff, you know, and, you know, I can also go that way with it to where I can get all kinds of added benefits just from one piece of equipment while still kind of accomplishing what I want to do with it. Anyway, so it, it, it takes some playing around. One thing you might want to do is um, put an upgrade on your gear, then go to your stats and see how it affects you, okay? And then... um switch out upgrades on that gear and then go back to your stats and see how it affects you differently. Like you might find a surprise boost in some of your stats uh, from doing one thing, right? And then if you try this other thing, it may give you a great boost in one thing, but not do anything for you anywhere else. And so, like I say, it's, it's up for you to just, you know, experiment with a little bit. And that all comes down to personal choice, you know? Um, so essentially, just just to make it simple, is this master crafting what it does here? I'm going to use this dragon tooth because I have a few of these, and I, I probably won't be using this on my end game gear because I'll be going for specific perks that I want on my stuff. All right, but I'll try this. And what this has a chance to do is raise um, my armor rating by 10 percent, as well as anything else that's on my armor. It, it says it raises all your armor stats by 10 percent if it takes. It's kind of like critical crafting. What it is, dragon tooth, it gives you a 40 percent chance. Um, to add that effect to your gear, right? And th but then it becomes a masterwork, right? And so we'll see. It says 143 now. We'll see what happens. It'll either happen or it won't. Once I, you know, it's it's basically a, a coin toss, more or less, right? And uh, and then once again, this just this is just personal choice. It's what do I want to do? Notice I picked this piece of armor because it had three slots instead of just two, right? And I started with the base material that would give me the best uh, base armor rating. Um, one of them, it was like, um, what was it, like 103 or 113 or something. And then this one, um, what I start with, Obsidian, um, it gave me 143, all right? So that's that's like a second tier item. And then I come in here and I kind of look around and I say, okay, well, I can't really do much for my offense um, with uh, the base stats on this armor. But I can kind of mix and match... Um, what kind of defense I'm looking for. Sometimes you can keep in mind what you've been having a lot of problems with. Well, I don't have problems with anything but archers. Well, then go for range defense. There you go. You know, that that's that's kind of easy. If several things are giving you a problem, then, you know, kind of put, put stats on there that cover all those things. Like with me, it's those stupid wraiths that one-shot me, you know? And so what I was thinking um, doing here is maybe going for some uh, um, ranged defense and magic defense, you know? All right? And so here, I have base ranged, and then maybe I can throw some magic defense on my um, upgrades, right? Like my uh, my arms and my legs, and also throw on something that's offense related. Okay, and that's what I have in mind. So let's look. You have mail arms, armor arms, coat arms, different things to choose from. So what's going to give me what I want, all right? Basically have an idea of what you want to do ahead of time, and then craft your gear to fit that. Instead of crafting a bunch of gear and then working with it, know what you want to do and then make your gear accordingly, right? Kind of like putting the horse before the cart so it can pull the cart. There you go, right? And so here, with my upgrades, I get an opportunity to add some strength and constitution, which is really cool, right? With materials that I have plenty of right now. And there we go. There's some magic defense. And uh, it looks like I have a choice between, say, 2 and 3%. Um... Spirit resistance is also kind of tempting, too, because those stupid uh, arcane horrors. But uh, there we go. I have enough of those. I have plenty of those. All right. Apparently, I've been collecting them. So there's an extra 3% bonus there. And that covers all magic, including status-type magic. It's every kind of magic attack, including, like, horror and uh, terror and sleep and all that kind of stuff. It has some resistance. I think, essentially, what it does is it shortens the time that it affects you. Like, say, those terrors, when they hit you with terror and you're sitting there holding your head and screaming in terror then um, it'll shorten the duration of that effect. I believe that's how that works. Anyway, it's it's magic resistance all the way across the board. And um, 
I can go for uh, strength and even a little more constitution, or I can see if I have enough of, which I do, I have a lot of this, so I can just go pure strength, and that's um, that's just keeping damage in mind. That is uh, attack for a warrior, which adds to your base damage overall. All right, that sounds good to me, and then I can stack some more magic defense overall. Like I say, I already have some extra range defense now built into my armor. And so, you know, it, it covers the bases that I want to cover with this with this set, and uh, that seems pretty cool to me. So as soon as I throw those on, all that extra buff is going to be on just that one set of gear. And it plays right in with my weapon also. It's going to be really nice going out there and my, uh, all my abilities are going to cost just a little less. Although I'm not, I don't rely heavily on abilities. I mostly go uh, for basic attacks and stuff, but... Uh, there's something to consider if that if that goes into the specialist tree, especially use you guys that are using like say Ring of Pain with your Reaver and stuff. Um, I believe it affects that also. I would think it would, and so if you can get extra stamina regen and reduce the cost, right? Then uh, that's 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 a pretty big uh, pretty big boost right there. All right, so let's see. Uh, with what I have on my sword, or my sword as it sits right now, my critical chance, it says 24%. Okay. I can go in here. All right, this one is just uh, straight cunning. So I put that on there and let's see what it does to my critical chance. Like I say, you can come in here and experiment. It dropped to 21%, but it essentially added a little bit of range defense. Okay. Come in here and switch back, right? Go with this. This gives me the 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 three percent critical chance, but also adds constitution and strength. So this weapon by itself is is adding twenty to my strength. That seems pretty significant. All right. So we're uh, now twenty. Now see that's weird because it said twenty four a minute ago, right? Unless um, the numbers were just kind of glitched. Um, perhaps it's still counting some buff from one of my other party members or something but uh you saw i just switched out that equipment anyway okay so say i get one percent less or maybe that'll correct itself and it'll go back up to 24 i don't know that doesn't sound right either because it was only three percent difference anyway um whatever the case may be this piece will give me uh extra strength and constitution also and it's only essentially a one percent critical chance difference and so uh i think the benefits outweigh that other one that, that was just base cunning all right and that's it. So that's that's master crafting in a nutshell. And you guys go to work with it. You know, whatever your play style is, craft your gear accordingly, and uh, go 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 kill things. You know what I'm saying? All right. If you want to subscribe, hit that button over my head. For all my videos, click the boxes on the left. And I will catch you guys later. I'll take care.